Have you logged into your Google Analytics 4 account and wondered what happened to all the reports that you know and love? Well, this video will help you make sense of it all. Stay tuned as I show you how to make sense of it with the periodic table of GA4 to understand what's changed. Okay, so in this video, we are talking about the front end reports that you can access in GA4 and how they're different from Universal Analytics. Each of these front end elements of GA are listed in our periodic table of GA4. If you want to learn everything about GA4, be sure to download this free PDF at ddu.ai slash GA4 table. Also, if you want to learn the back end of GA4, check out part one in the description or go to ddu.ai slash GA4 back end. Okay, now let's dive into the front end of GA4. Now when you log into GA4, it's common to think to yourself, what the heck is this? Well, it appears to be in the shape of a big boy. Nothing looks the same. The reports that you know and love aren't there, and it often feels like a big, hairy, ugly mess. But once you get over the initial shock, you will find there's some excellent improvements that simply weren't possible with Universal Analytics. And so I'm gonna try to put a positive spin on this as much as possible to show you what's new and better in GA4. The first one is custom navigation, and this one's awesome. You can customize your GA4 reports to include your own navigation, meaning you can take stuff away if you don't wanna show it to people, and you can make it much easier to go and to use so you're not having to go look at stuff that doesn't matter to you. The next one is something that is only gonna get better over time, and that's the exploration hub. You can explore your Google Analytics data in new and beautiful ways. And not only that, but they give you the ability and templates to do different analyses that you never could do before. And so one of the things that makes me excited about GA4 is that it's becoming more of a all-in-one business intelligence tool as opposed to just being a web-only analytics tool. And so if you have multiple channels that you're analyzing, or if you wanna do different techniques, or if you get the right data in there around customers and monetization, you can explore it and do well with it. Next one, automated insights. So there's a better and newer version of the automated insights in here and it tells you while you were out, this happened. So it tells you things that were happening on your site or on your store or on your mobile app while you weren't paying attention, they do a better job of surfacing up some more artificial intelligence and hopefully it only gets better from here. Then we have exploration templates. This is how you can build powerful analyses, models, in just a few clicks. And so if you wanna have an entire model that you want to use to look at your data, and again, do some cool templates and explore, you can do it all within there. And then we have real-time reports. This tells you who is visiting your site right now, who is, what are they doing on your site, and gives you a better idea as to what's happening. And I would say these are definitely somewhat of an improvement over the previous way of doing it in Universal Analytics. Now, real-time reports have been there before, but this one might give you some new insights that you didn't have in the past. So yes, the interface is different, and some reports may be missing, or they are missing, but there's still a lot you can do with GA4, and there are more features that will be added all the time, and I'll keep on hammering this point home that this is really just the beginning of what you can do now that they've cut over the back end uh, to the new back end, the front end's only gonna get better as they're able to focus more on front end reports. They needed to redo and completely overhaul the back end to make it possible for us to have these front end capabilities and the future is bright. Okay, so when it comes to the audience elements, many of the things you see are the old reliables and these should be familiar if you've used Universal Analytics before. But still, Google did make it a little bit less overwhelming to look at your audience reports by removing many redundant report views. You still have your tech reports, which helps you understand all the details of your users, their browsers, screen resolution, mobile, tablet, web, those types of things, which obviously is helpful for keeping your website up to date and knowing who your audience is. Speaking of audiences, audiences allow you to create groups of similar website visitors into audiences for deep analysis. And this replaces advanced segments. And so if you want to do more of an audience tracking, you wanna build that out, you can create the audience and it gives you a little bit more in-depth capabilities. At least it will once, once it works exactly how you want it to and you can apply it to all your different reports. And then we have demographics, which are a nice addition because they come right out of the box as opposed to requiring code like in Universal Analytics. And they don't require the same third-party cookies either. So you can get to know your 
users better, your visitors better, while respecting their privacy. When it comes to acquisition reports, as a performance marketer, this is probably my favorite part of Google Analytics, or it's always been there. That's the reason why I used Google Analytics. It helps you know how do your visitors or your customers find you, and what can you learn from your top traffic sources. History does repeat itself, and so learning what happened in the history of your website will allow you to do better with marketing. So it comes down to things like traffic acquisition, where you can learn about your website traffic sources, how they come in, Acquisition in general, how are you acquiring users and traffic to your site? And so I expect these ones to improve. They're okay right now, they're gonna get better over time, but they are a little bit different in the way that it sets up and the way that it looks in your reports. And um, there's some things in there that are only gonna get better as they get to parity with Universal Analytics. And so I'm trying to remain positive on those reports, even though they're not as good as they were in Universal. At least I don't use them in the same way. I don't find them as useful yet. That will be changing in the future. Now we get to some areas that I think are either improved or have a much better chance of being improved in the near future. One of them is behavior elements. So what happens when somebody's on your site? Now you'll see a lot of familiar elements to the behavior reports in Universal Analytics, but when they have it in place here with engagement, you can see that there's some configuration that needs to happen and there's some stuff that might be more useful. So one example is pages and screens. What are they looking at when they're on your site? What pages are they on and what screens are they on? They consolidate them together. And so now instead of looking at just page views, um, you have events that are happening and one event can be a page view. And so Google Analytics Universal was always based on pages. That's a out of date web 1.0 type way of looking at things, maybe web 2.0, but in the new future of the web, we're looking at things like screens. We're looking at all kinds of different ways of people interacting with you. Next, you have your event reports. Now, everything in GA4 is an event, but the event reports have special meaning because it's the ones that you want to define and the ones that you want to pay attention to. And so event reports are a little bit different than the old model in Universal Analytics. As we know, in Universal Analytics, we had event action, label, category, and value. Um, now you can have an event with any number of parameters. And so if you're attaching multiple parameters onto an event, you can get them in your events report. And then finally for this section, we have engagement. And it's telling you, are your visitors 10 second wonders or are they long haulers? Now engagement is in a way replacing things like bounce rate. A bounce rate, something that's dated, not very good. And I'm glad to see it go. I'd rather see engagement. Even if you don't fully agree with what engagement means, at least now we're getting a better idea as to whether they're engaging as opposed to just saying, did they bounce or not? Okay, conversion elements. One of the most significant changes in GA4 is how conversions are measured. Goals, they are gone, but there are now more ways to measure the impact economically of your website. And so even though these things are a little bit different, even though they've changed, I'm cautiously optimistic that these reports will become the natural successor to goals in Universal Analytics, but with a lot more integration with the rest of the GA4 data model. So there were some limitations with goals in Universal Analytics. And so I don't want to gloss over that and say that goals were perfect. People usually set them up wrong. They were convoluted. Um, you could have these gigantic conversion rates that would show up in every report, even if you, you know, if you had multiple goals. They weren't really very good because they were tied to a session. And I'd rather have it maybe tied to a user. I'd rather have it, I'd rather have a control over how my goals are set. And so that is going to be different in GA4. But there are other differences in conversions too. There's the monetization reports. It talks about stuff like, how does your site make money? And there's things like in-app purchases. If you're an app economy all-star, you can learn how many people are buying within your apps by tracking that. And so you can have it both side by side in one place. You can see how much money you're making across multiple channels. Publisher ads. If you are a publisher and you're monetizing through ads, you can unlock deeper ad performance reporting and improve your results by knowing how things are working. And then we also have e-commerce purchases, which are the bread and butter of GA. So you can summarize your most important money makers. It does require some code, but the good news is that you can attach it to your universal analytics e-commerce tracking until you can get the code up and running for GA4 native. And if you want to know more about GA4 e-commerce tracking, I did a whole workshop with my friend Charles Farina on that. So go to datadrivenu.com and you can see more about our courses, especially our GA4 e-commerce course. 
Next, we have funnels. You can customize your funnels to the greatest extent possible. That is allowing you to customize funnels. So in GA Universal, funnels were pretty rigid. You had to set up the path and a lot of times it didn't work or it didn't really make sense. It almost never made sense actually. Now you can create custom funnels, which is a great way to explore what's happening and what happened within your website data. So I love the ability to create custom funnels. Then finally, conversions. Helping you figure out, did somebody take an action you wanted them to take? Understanding how they accomplished the purpose of your website. And that's something that is, it's always been there, or we've called it conversions, conversion rate inside Universal Analytics. But now instead of being a goal, it's called a conversion. And there's a little bit better um, accounting, accountability for it in that way. Although, as of the time that I record this, there is no conversion rate metric inside GA4, which I think is deeply lacking. So I'm, again, staying optimistic and saying, you know what, Universal's going away, so we have to get used to some of these things. Even if I don't love it, I'm gonna have to learn to love it because I'm not gonna have the old option for anything after July 1, 2023. And so I'm gonna wrap up this video by telling you this, and you can probably tell already, I'm taking a cautiously optimistic approach to selling the reports that are in GA4. There are some promising developments, but there are also several steps backwards for user friendliness, and it's not the trusty workhouse that I'm used to. This is where I reiterate that GA4 is a very young product and will only improve from here. So please be patient and make sure that you double tag with Universal as long as you can, especially as we wait for GA4 to become more complete as a product. Now I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but I'm just a messenger here, I'm not Google. So Universal Analytics is going away and the clock is ticking. So I have no choice but to focus on the positive of GA4 than to live in the past. Although I'm gonna have a video coming up where I talk about alternatives to GA4, alternatives to GA in general. But in the meantime, hopefully this video helps you do the same, helps you move on and realize that we can't mourn the past, we have to think about the future, and I do think that GA4 is going to be the future for most of us. And remember, if you wanna see everything new in GA4, be sure to visit ddu.ai slash GA4 table to get the latest version of the periodic table of Google Analytics. And while you're at it, leave a comment here on this video if there are any elements of GA4 that you'd like to see a dedicated video covering. I'd love to do some more dedicated videos Go deep into certain areas if you wanna hear it. So leave a comment and let me know what video you'd like to see next as we explore the reports in GA4.